Hi everybody, it's time for us to look at the ancient art of combining strings and variables. It doesn't matter whether you're printing something to the console, defining some property or key to an object, combining things to create a complex CSS property, you're going to be finding yourself, if you haven't already, combining some text together made up of things you're specifying directly in code and things that we passed in as an argument or be generated dynamically as part of just our apps running. And so in this video, we're gonna look at two ways of how you can make combining strings and variables possible. We look at an old school approach that has been the way we've been doing it for a very long time. And we look at a brand new approach that has been a part of the new JavaScript language enhancements that greatly simplify how we can make all of this work well. So let's get started. To make this example work well, I'm gonna create a small function. It's gonna be called say greeting. And this say greeting function takes three arguments. One argument is greeting, another one is who, and the last one is emoji. You can imagine that the goal of this function is that when I call it with the three arguments specified, we print some text to our console that combines the value of greeting, the value of who, and the value of emoji. And so let's start with the very basic approach here. So the example is I'm going to be printing three arguments to the screen. Here's how it works. You know, imagine one argument is hello, hello, hello. The second argument is police officer panda. And the emoji is the panda itself, the panda emoji icon. And what will be printed out is the area highlighted in yellow, hello, 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 comma, police officer panda, how are you? And then the panda as well. Now, you know, bonus points to anybody who knows what this is actually from. Here's a hint. I have a three-year-old child, so that should give you an idea of where this might narrow your scope of searching down into figuring out where this might be coming from. And of course, the, the big things to notice is that the words in this greeting are entirely based on some of the arguments, but some of the words you see here are ones that are generated by our code itself. So it's a great example that kind of touches upon having some text that we generate based on input from something dynamic like an argument, and then based on some text that we provide as part of our code itself. So let's go and look at the more traditional old school approach for how we might build a function and how might build a string that looks like this. So here is an approach which is typically known as the concatenation approach, or I like to call it a bunch of plus and comma characters. And so here you can see we have our say greeting function just as we kind of defined the template earlier. And we have the message variable. And look at what the value of this message variable is. It's the argument greeting, it's the plus symbol, and then it is the, you know, we want to have a comma and a space. So we delineate that with the quotation marks to indicate that we're going to be adding this comma and a space to it, plus the variable for who. Then it's going to be the rest of it, in which case it's going to be an exclamation mark and all these various things that kind of go into generating the final content. And so if we look at an example where instead of using the example we saw earlier, I'm creating this new variable called Batman and I'm calling say greeting and the arguments are good morning, Batman and smiley face emoji. And if we print the output of say greeting to the console, you'll see that good morning, Batman, how are you? is printed to the screen. The part to notice is that what I'm printing here is a simple string, but how we built it is made of this combination of plus characters and quotation marks, and we have to think about the spacing. It's a little bit funky, and you can imagine if we have a more complex expression that we want to ultimately turn into a string, this can get quite unwieldy, and I don't know about you, but almost always when I'm doing this, I either forget a formatting character needs to be there, or I forget a plus character, because I'm not thinking about you know my content in terms of breaking it up into this format, I'm really thinking about it in the form of the output right here, which is good morning, Batman, how are you? And what is the easiest way for me to break it up into this working example? So the people who build JavaScript who enhance the language, they recognized that this is a problem and there are many people, not just me, not just you, who probably find this approach to be just a little unwieldy, a little bit frustrating. And so what we have now is this new way of doing things, which is a feature known as template literals added as part of the ES6 level of enhancements to JavaScript. And for this example, let's take a look at our say greeting function again. And notice what we have here. We have a variable called message. And in this case, the what we have is not a series of weird quotation marks and plus characters. We have some equally weird symbols. First, we have the back tick character. You're wondering, what is the back tick character? It is this character right here. 
Uh, I don't know about how many of your keyboards work, but on a typical keyboard that I'm used to in, in US English in America, the back tick is the little character just to the left of the number one on the row of numbers you have in your keyboard. So it's this one right here. So getting back to that, the back tick character indicates that what we're gonna be defining is gonna be a template literal. And what we have then into kind of making this template literal resolved into the values we want to show is by using this symbol, the dollar sign, and then the curly brackets, and then the variable we wanna show off here. But the interesting part here is that I'm not actually doing anything special to separate out the content, which is the text, from the general expression that I want JavaScript to evaluate. It is all just provided in line. You can just see that greeting, comma, who, exclamation mark, how are you? Everything is provided without any extra level of formatting. I just need to delineate the part that needs to be expressed as a JavaScript expression separately by using this dollar sign format. So you can kind of see how we simplified what we had earlier into this form right here. So we just, the only way to separate that out is to use a back tick to open my expression for turning this into a string and close it with a back tick as well. And so if you look at it right now, where I'm going back to the original example where I have say greeting and I'm calling it hello, 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 police officer panda, and then the panda itself, and I log it to the screen, you can now see everything is displayed appropriately. That's pretty cool. And it simplifies greatly how we make working with strings a little bit better. Now, before I call it a day, I just wanna make sure to, we haven't really been doing a lot of live coding in this particular video, I'll just show you some example. So I wanna just very quickly walk through like an example of how this would actually look like and an approach I would use to make template literals work really well. So here I have a function called print inventory, it takes two arguments, item and price. And what I really wanna you know, print to the screen is something like the item is, the item has a cost of price, whatever it's the value of price. And so what I know, so this is a general item output I wanna go out with. And so the item would be, you know, whatever the item is going to be as an argument and what the price is going to be as an argument. And so I'm just gonna do a simple formula just like before. I'm gonna say let message equals, in this case, I'm gonna use the back tick character, the, you know, actually there are two ways of doing this. One is I'm just gonna copy and paste the entire string into this directly. The item has a cost of price. And if I were to print this to the screen, and let's go ahead and do that actually, return message. And now let's go ahead and just call print inventory. And I'm actually gonna do console.log of print inventory. Log print inventory. And I'm gonna say Apple, and the price is gonna be $1.50, okay? And so if I were to print this to the screen, what you what do you think you'll, you'll see here? Let me refresh this page. You'll see the item has cost of price. Let me zoom in a bit. And that's that makes sense because we really haven't specified anything fancy to provide here. But what I can do now is instead of having it the word item and the value for price being hard coded, I can use a template literal approach where I'm gonna put dollar sign, bracket, and item. And then for price, I'm gonna do the same thing, dollar sign, bracket, price. And notice that I didn't have to do any other modification and had to do any kind of separation of the space. The what you see is what you get for the most part, except this value gets ultimately resolved to what I have specified as part of the argument. Let me refresh the page again. And now notice that you now see the apple has a cost of $1.50 appearing. So that's a very quick example of how we can use the template literal approach, not just in slide form, but in code form as well. And I showed you one way I like to do this, which is really pasting the full output that I want, and then just substituting the appropriate template syntax to make sure it's replaced with the value that we care about at runtime. And so there you have it, two approaches for being able to solve the age old problem of how do I have a string that is made up of things that are specified directly in the code and then things that are generated or provided by something external to our application. The you know, concatenation approach we saw earlier, that's the way you've probably been seeing combining strings and variables for a very long time. It's not a bad approach, it totally works. There are very simple things, so you can use that. But why go through all the hassle of keeping track of all your plus signs and your 
or plus character and all the quotation marks when you can do the most more, more modern template literal approach where you just use the back tick character and the dollar sign and angle brackets to provide a, a much easier way for being able to generate both simple strings but also much more complex ones as we'll come to in more complex examples in your you know, programming life as a JavaScript developer. With that, if you have any questions, please post in the forums at formnetcrypt.com where I and others would be happy to help you out. If you like the way this video was presented, if you like the content, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I might be posting. Follow me at Krupa for more bite-sized updates on Twitter, Instagram, and other locations where you might find me. And lastly, a lot of the content I provide is not just provided in video form, it's not just provided as free content on Krupa.com, it's also available in book form if you like to read on a Kindle device or as a paperback, or you wanna gift the gift, uh, gift the gift, is that even a phrase? If you wanna give someone the gift of reading technical topics in a book form, they're all available in books. The link at the description at the bottom will take you to the books page where you can find all the books that I've written and choose whichever one is appropriate to what you're trying to do or not trying to do. I'm terrible at selling things as you can figure it out. And with that, I'll see you all next time.